This was sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Brian in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Don't Wilkesboro or North Wilkesboro? It says Wilkesboro. Okay, just want to make sure. I want to make sure he was on a, from the right side of town. What are you telling me about North Wilkesboro? Well, boy, I'll tell you what. I checked in a hotel there one night, stuck the key in the door, broke the window. <laughs> Room was so small, I had to step outside to change my mind. They stole my towels, I'll have you know. Okay, okay. All right. Let's get this question here. During a segment on Busted Open this past month, Tommy Dreamer mentioned that before NXT, Triple H's original idea was to build a minor league system similar to what baseball uses, with Paul Heyman, Gabe Sapolsky, and Jim Cornette each in charge of a territory. According to Dreamer, wrestlers would have to pass through each territory before making it to the main roster. The idea got shot down. Dreamer said, excuse me, the idea got shot down, Dreamer said, and so they went with NXT. I was wondering if Jim had ever heard about this and if he thought a minor league setup like that could work in today's industry. Well, I heard about it when it was first thought up, which was years before that. Um... The original idea for developmental in 99 and 2000, 2001 was that there would be a number of developmental territories. Um, OVW was the first, obviously, because we started the thing, had the idea of uh, JR had me come down as an experiment. But then Les Thatcher had the HWA Heartland Wrestling Association up in Cincinnati and had a school and everybody had known less for years. And uh, so they gave him a developmental deal since Cincinnati and Louisville were only a hundred miles apart, but different TV markets. Then that kept the product separate. And they tried to do the same thing with deep South. And they tried to do the same thing that fucking goofy, bald headed idiot, Rick Bassman out. That was just an excuse for Bruce to fly to Los Angeles once in a while. And Bassman would take him to titty bars. Uh, they got no work done there and he never trained any decent wrestlers because it was just a showbiz Hollywood bullshit fucking wrestling school out there. But at least we got Cena away from him. Well, you really anyway, don't like Bassman. Every time his name no. comes up, you kill him. Yeah, because he's a piece of shit. He was one of those guys every time that there was a TV a documentary to be done to expose the business, they'd come to him and he'd provide them wrestlers and make sure that, you know, as long as you fucking give me a credit or a check or whatever, um, you know, I don't care what you're saying about the wrestling business. And remember that Aaron Aguilera? I can't remember what name he worked on the West Coast. Yeah, he's the one he was in the, uh, he was with Carlito against Cena, right? Yes, yes. Well, they sent him to OVW about two weeks after I had seen one of those Rick Bassman cooperated exposés on television. This was back in like 2004. And I was sitting in Danny Davis's office, cussing that fucking Bassman, telling Danny what a piece of shit he was, how they exposed the business on television, and everybody that went along with it should have been shot and boiled in oil. They just signed him and sent him there. He's a, I was in that show. They did that last year. Motherfucker. I had to fucking... I kept him off TV for the first couple of months he was here. And I can't remember, if he had long hair, I made him shave it. If he had shaved hair, I made him grow it out long and changed his name to something else before I would put him on OVW television. So nobody would recognize him as having been a part of the expose. Another time, Rick Bassman brought that Tom Howard, who was a heck of a talent, and this other guy as a tag team for a dark match tryout um, at one of the Raw tapings. And he insisted on being their manager, Ricky B., well, Tom Howard's partner was the one of the most, he looked like Ultimate Warrior his first year in the business. One of the most cartoonishly jacked up steroided bodybuilders I'd ever seen. And he had only had three or four matches. And he was the shits, even though he's a nice guy and tried hard. But Bassman brought him because he knew Vince liked bodies. And Bassman was all about trying to get guys signed because another thing that Bassman had was a fucking deal that if you went to his wrestling school, you signed a deal. If you got signed, he got a percentage of your money on an ongoing basis with no, apparently no cutoff date. Can you imagine if he'd have got 10 or 20% of Cena's money? If those contracts had stopped every, I helped everybody that I ever knew sign a contract like that with him or anybody else 
find a lawyer to get out of it because that's bullshit. Train a guy and then say, okay, now you owe me money for the rest of your fucking life. Okay, moolah. Yeah, at least Vern um, had a cutoff with Flair. Yeah, Vern had a cutoff. Yes, exactly. Um, so Ricky B was the manager of this big bodybuilding fuck and Tom Howard, who was a heck of a talent. And Howard was incredibly uh, 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 impressive. And I think if he'd have been having a single match, he might've got a job, but with this schlub tag team, bodybuilder tag team partner and the goofy manager, it didn't know what he was doing outside. It was a shitty match and none of them got a job and they just humored the guy because he gave them local job guys as fill-in talent from his fucking school uh and also took bruce to titty bars when he went out there so that's why rick bassman for a short period of time was affiliated then i'll have you know we started doing uh, shows at six flags kentucky kingdom here in louisville and had an exclusive contract but that was our big fucking contract ovws of the year they paid us more money per capita for time and and uh effort involved than the wwf did and they called me up one day and said, say, we just got a brochure from this wrestling company saying they wanted to put shows on at all the Six Flags. Oh, send that over to me. Bassman had made up flyers using Cena on the front of his flyer, even when Cena was already in Louisville. He wasn't in the WWF yet, but he was already in Louisville. He was working for us. <laughs> and he'd send him, send him out to all the Six Flags in the country trying to sell shows and got to ours and said official developmental territory of the WWE or something like when it wasn't, it wasn't at the time he was lying because he did that often. He had a contract for like six months, but he said he was a developmental territory for like five years. So I called fucking office, talked to Jr. and said, you tell this little bald headed piece of shit that if he ever sends any more advertising material to our six flags especially featuring talent on the cover of his brochure that we've got on our show. I will find him and I will fuck him up that little midget bald headed sack of shit skull fuck him and leave his remains in a ditch, which was second only to the promo <laughs> that I actually did call up and cut on him on his voicemail. Cause he wouldn't answer his phone <laughs> when I think it was over Sylvester Turkey, I think had one of those deals. Um, where he had been trained out there in Santa Con, and they they tried to take some of his money. I think one of them had to go to a lawyer. I can't remember who it was to get out of it. But anyway, I found out about this, and I I called up and I videotaped this fucking ass chewing, and then took it to Danny Davis's Super Bowl party and played it for all the boys that had come from California and knew who he was. So you piece of shit, you business raping piece of fucking shit trying to stick your hand in all these guys pockets when you taught them nothing but how to write a check and everything they got was on their looks and their talent not your say so because nobody thinks anything of you but a piece of shit and a piece of dog shit on the heel of a wrestling boot of our business so fuck you they all like that so anyway yeah rick bassman fuck him what was the question a potential WWE minor league system with you, oh, Paul oh, Heyman, oh. and Gabe Sapolsky. Yeah, so anyway, there were supposed to be these territories. One territory was Cincinnati, Louisville, um, Deep South for a while there. They were at Florida Championship Wrestling was originally supposed to just be part of the, the family instead of the only place. That's, you know, I, we knew what they were doing. They were trying to get Florida set up because everybody, all the friends lived there and all the people that wanted jobs lived there. But no, the idea was never pitched and I don't know, I, the timing of that is suspect because Gabe Sapolsky was with Ring of Honor until 2009. Um, I wasn't with the WWE at all or OVW after 2005. And Heyman was, was there for the run with Brock early and then got on the shit list and went looking for Larry for years and didn't come back until they needed him with Brock again. So, no, I don't think that the timing of that, I think maybe somebody said it and Tommy heard it or whatever, but he wasn't around at the point where this could have, actually, it never could have happened. Because, like I said, Gabe was with Ring of Honor until I was gone from WWE. Paul was with WWE for the while there. They sent him down here to try to replace me. 
and and he got out of that as quickly as he could because he didn't want to be here. So no, I no. It and it sounds like something that sounds like a good story that somebody probably wishful thinking came up with. Do you think a minor league system would work or would be a good idea right now in 2020 for WWE? Well, fuck, of course. Of course. We've we've talked about the umpteen reasons why you can learn more in a place like OVW or in a territory, a place that's run like a territory, than you can in a place that's run like NXT where there's too many people uh, nobody gets focused on. Everybody works the same and trains the same and looks the same and is not encouraged to be different. And, you know, it's just another TV product. You need to go out. You need to fucking work the goddamn spot shows. You need to be on a local television and you need to have only a peripheral of uh, uh, liaison or working relationship or whatever, or relationship, the wrestler with the WWE, because that's why I always said the OVW guys, I didn't reveal all of them had contracts that did every once in a while. I'd reveal so, so-and-so has won by virtue of his winning the OVW title or this great showing against this WWE superstar has been awarded a contract. It's a long sought after and hard fought proposition to get one of these. They don't hand them out like candy and it was a big deal then to the fans when somebody that they liked locally would get one. But if just every, there's a hundred guys here and they're all signed up for the WWE and, and you know, it, no, a little territory in a regional market that you can run affordably like a Louisville or a Cincinnati or whatever, not fucking Orlando, Florida. That's as stupid as going to Dallas, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Los Angeles, Chicago, or fucking Philadelphia. You could spend a fucking million dollars just to get started and run it like a territory. And that's where guys get and, and use guys as preliminary guys and use guys as middle guys, use guys as main event guys. <clears throat> that's where they learn what they're doing. You know, it's it's just that's that's another thing that's lost. That's why these guys work like they do today. It's not all their fault. There's no place to go and learn how to do it properly. You can learn how to do the moves the same way as everybody else does, but you can't learn how to work because most of working is not moves. It's thinking and realizing why you're doing what you're doing or when to do it or what reaction it should get. And you don't do that until you try a bunch of shit and, and fuck up on your own a lot. <laughs>